I'm Peter Murray Rust. I founded the Content Mind to use machines to read the whole scientific literature and bring facts to everybody. And the examples we're showing are endangered species and clinical trials. Mary the polar bear is looking for papers about endangered species in the Arctic. This one's fine. This one isn't. This one's fine. This one certainly isn't, nor is this one. Gosh, I don't understand that word. We've got to look it up in Wikipedia. Wow, we've got 400 papers already. And it gets worse each year. This is how fast the scientific literature is increasing. It's literally a document every other second. Papers, patents, theses, reports. It never stops. So we need to write software and use machines. Everything's coordinated through GitHub, including the software. This is our complete pipeline, all the way from discovering papers, downloading them, normalizing them, searching them, and putting the facts in our index. There's five software modules, all of them novel. Get Papers lets you issue a query and download all the papers associated with it in one go automatically. Quickscrape retrieves everything for a paper on the web, including supplemental data, abstracts, bibliography, and anything else that the publisher provides. Every publisher produces a different set of files, PDFs, HTML, XML, doc, etc. And Norma stitches them all back together into a single semantic form called scholarly HTML. Amy is where the mining takes place. We have mining tools for sequences, species, chemistry, phylogenetic trees, and you can create your own searches using regular expressions or templates. The facts which are produced by Amy can either be stored in CAT uh, which is an elastic search query system, or can be pumped into Wikidata or other systems such as Zenodo. So we're starting to read the literature for all mentions of endangered species. And we can now search uh, for Ursus maritimus, the polar bear, find all the papers. And now we find all the sentences which describe what Ursus is doing on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, uh, we've got the titles of the papers. And let's click through to one. And here it is an important paper. The interactive content mine bubble graph shows many mentions of several bear species and the seminal paper linking them all. So we've got a wonderful team of early career researchers, all of whom have got visions that they want to push forward. Some years ago, I had the big vision of having all the world's scientific knowledge at my fingertips. Co-occurrence of mosquito species, insecticide chemicals, um, and resistance data to produce a dynamically updated map of mosquito insecticide resistance around the world, which is really important for vector control. And I want to reuse, reanalyze, and do synthesis on phylogenetic trees. I also make science about science, especially the social dynamics and how do narratives change, how do funding change. How... The team wants to change the way science is done, so we're applying for a third year of Shuttleworth funding. So we're concentrating on these areas in the next year. We fought for mining to be legal in the UK and we're now starting to do it. The European Parliament wants reform, but there's massive opposition from publishers. So we've created a slogan. The right to read is the right to mine. And if you take nothing else away from today, that phrase is important. I believe uh, that if you can read something, uh, you have legal access to it, then your machine should have uh, legal access to mine it as well. And the problem is that that is not the case, and that is one of the major battles that we're fighting. And these are some of the organisations that we're working with. We're concentrating on a few areas of science where people are particularly keen to work with us. 
We're using these methods to help reviewers of clinical trials to find key terms such as obesity, smoking, and body mass. It takes many people many days to filter out unwanted papers, and we can reduce this to minutes on a machine. With, with Content Mine and TGAC to um, get lots of people together to hack the Content Mine platform to extract facts about synthetic biology. We've developed a wide range of materials in modular form for training and workshops. We hacked 2,000 papers on clinical trials at MOSFEST this year and within an hour we were getting new results. Wait, or uh, White, he, White, um, he's also a very central person, but his network looks more natural, right? It looks more spread out. Much of our software is unique and will allow scientists to do things they can't do at the moment. And here's a graph that we can interpret in a few seconds. Most importantly, we're working with partners such as Cochrane, Systematic Reviews, Open Trials um, and the library community. In Cambridge, we have a world-class library and also the UK copyright exception, so, so we can create a centre of excellence for mining scientific content. We're putting in a secure server in chemistry dedicated to responsible content mining, and we reach out to any scientists in Cambridge, UK and beyond. And since we'll need training, we'll work with libraries to help them develop this for their own research services. We work with publishers such as PLOS and BMC, whose material we use and annotate. And we're part of the hypothesis community who sees annotation as part of the semantic future. And content mining is not just for universities, it's for everyone.